Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase a coding challenge platform. And I was contacted by the team behind Code Crafters, which then allowed me to have a look at the platform, try some of the experiences, and I actually think it's a very interesting approach, and I therefore want to share with you guys my experience. So, just for a quick look, the general idea on Code Crafters is targeted towards somewhat experienced developers. It shouldn't be your first platform, you should have a basic understanding of probably one or more languages, some basic software development, software engineering concepts. Code crafters then allow us to actually build smaller versions, more or less, of existing technologies, which then allow us to learn either a new language or learn more about these technologies while expanding our current knowledge on an already existing language. So for now, for example, I just started to build your own Git to then kind of explore the basic concept of, of Git. I just use Java, my main language, just to get a basic understanding of how the platform works. But as you can see here, they have a bunch of different languages, and most of the challenges are in most of the languages provided, where the main popular languages on this platform, which makes sense because that's kind of what's hot and trendy right now, is Rust and Go, and of course Python, which is a good all-around stable language to have a, at least a basic understanding of. So how it works is, let's say, for example, I'm in my process of building my own Git in Java. How it then works is that I would first clone a repository they kind of provide. This then allows me also, again, it being a bit more not too user-friendly platform that they don't have like these online code interpreters in their platform. You would clone a GitHub repository. Again, you should know Git. I can then simply build it wherever I want, however I want. In this case, I use IntelliJ as I would always do for Java. I then simply build a feature based on their guidance and I then push this feature to my main branch and then have an automated system. As you see here, for example, right now I'm on writing a tree object for Git. The test are failing because I haven't done it yet. But when I then simply would make my changes locally and then push them, they then have some automated test setup that then simply checks uh, my current version of my project. Gotta match the current state for these tests. If it matches, it succeeds the test and I can continue. So again, there's a lot of control where I can build wherever I want. I'm not locked to use their online interpreters, which is not, at least would never be my preferred path. And I think that's actually just a very nice feature and a very nice way of being a bit more advanced compared to some very simple, like just doing smaller coding challenges in some kind of like online interpreters. And again, just to have a quick look of some of the challenges, which I think is very fascinating. Of course, I started doing the build your own Git to get a basic understanding of the basic structure of Git and how it actually works. You can do build your own Redis, HP servers, interpreters, basic shell, some basic database setup. And again, if you have a specific language, for example, I'm thinking about maybe starting doing some Go stuff, as I think Go seems like a very interesting and very modern concept. Then to me, this would be the, the perfect way of, okay, saying I would like to learn maybe a bit about actually how Redis works or building my own HTTP server. Then both getting a basic concept of how the HTTP server actually would work a bit more on the low end side, while on the same time learning a language like Go. And again, it, it should be very clear from this, this is very much a back-end focused coding challenge setup. And most of these are going to be, or they are going to be CLIs. So we're not building interfaces, it's just straight back-end. And it's very much the, a bit more nitty-gritty focus of actually building real applications, which to me is, is so much nicer than doing just a bunch of small coding challenges where I don't really feel like I'm actually accomplishing much. Where I would actually end up having a small version of Git when I'm done, or actually having built my own simple version of an HTTP server in Go, for example, in a new language. So if you're already a somewhat experienced developer, you want to learn a bit more about some of these concepts, and you like a good challenge, I would definitely encourage you to try this uh, platform. I think it's, it's a great way of actually being forced to be a bit more independent. Uh, there is some hand-holding, and there is some examples you can see like code examples of how other people would solve these challenges. There are sometimes some like screencast people discussing the tasks, but it's not too handholdy. It requires you to do a 
actually a bit of thinking and understanding the concept or even some research sometimes. But I definitely think it's a very interesting platform and definitely think it's one of the better ways to continue learning if you like to learn by actually building real stuff. So if you enjoyed this uh, showcase of the Code Crafters Coding Challenge platform, please leave a like and subscribe and take a look at the link in the description. And of course, I wish you all a wonderful day.